Alright, what is up guys? Code War 29 is back with a brand new video. In today's video, we're doing part 10 to our beginner scripting series. Today we're gonna be looking at leader stats, which is uh which is a very important part in making a Roblox game, as are all the other parts. So make sure to subscribe because I'm putting these out every week for you guys. Um and I know you guys are really enjoying it, so we're gonna keep on making these. We're gonna ha have at least like four more parts after this, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then we might make a game after the end at the end. Um so yeah, uh like I said, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button. Um, and let's dive right into it. So what, uh, first, what are leader stats? Well, you've probably seen leader stats in a Roblox game. Leader stats are the little thing in the top right corner, um, that show you, like, your cash or your coins or anything, your in-game currency, okay? Um, so yeah, how do we make leader stats? So let's, uh, let's go over that. First, we're gonna insert a brand new script into server script service, and we can name this script something like leader stats. Uh, doesn't matter what you name it. And we're going to get right on into it. Okay, so um, we can say game.players because we want to go into the players folder, right? And then remember are you, uh, in the functions episode in episode 3 where we went over um, events? There's an event called uh, player added. And what this is doing is um, when we write colon connect function like that, remember that? This, whatever's inside of here will happen whenever a player joins the game, okay? So make sure it looks uh, like this, okay? Let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, make sure it looks like that. And then also, do you remember parameters from that? So with this player added, not all functions, I'm oh, sorry, events, but this event has a built in parameter called player, or we can call it PLR. Really does not matter what you call it, but that is the player that joined, okay? All right, so we can just say um, local leader stats equals, and then we'll instance, so instance.new, we're going to create a brand new thing called a folder. So yes, in Roblox, there are folders. So we can go over to the workspace and we can insert a folder. That's a folder, okay? So these are ways to keep your game nice and organized. In this folder, we'll say we're going to change its properties here. Uh, leader stats.parent equals players so we're going to create every single time a player joins the game we're going to create a brand new folder called leader stats and put it inside of the player and why are we creating a brand new folder every time why can't we just have a leader stats folder inside of workspace you may be wondering and that's a pretty good question actually that is a great question um the answer is simply because everybody will have their own values right so like every this player one might have 25 coins but player two maybe he has 30 coins okay Okay, and um, so basically, they're going to have different amounts of currency, so we don't want to store it all in one folder. We just want to give every player their own folder so that they can have their unique amount of coins, okay? And that's just how Roblox does it. So we've changed the parent, so we're putting it inside the player. Every time a player joins, we're making a new folder and putting it in the player uh, that just joined. And we can say leaderstats.name equals quotation marks leader stats okay this is super important leader stats spell it like that with a lowercase l so actually what we can go ahead and do now is we can hit play and there are leader stats already we just don't have anything uh like any currency or anything like that yet um because the coins or whatever we'll probably do coins for this aren't here yet we haven't made coins but if we go into our players we will see that my player has a folder called leader stats okay we have a brand new folder oh hi soldier we have a brand new folder called leader stats and that that's what we're going to work with okay in our leader stats script let's just create uh some coins so we, how we do that is we say local coins equals instance dot new so we're creating a new thing again and we're going to do parentheses, and we're going to create an int value. So do you remember in our uh, values episode, episode two, we went over three values, bools, integers, and strings. Strings were with quotation marks, bools were true or false, and integers were numbers. So what do you think an int value is? You can pause it if you want, test yourself, quiz yourself. If you said an int value holds a number, you're correct. So an int value will always hold a number. That's why we're creating a new int value. You can actually create an int value here, and you can see we can change its name, we, but we can only change it to, like, numbers. Because if we type in a string like this, we'll get an error, okay? So we're going to have numbers and then somebody asked me what uh in the comments what an output does in the actual game it's just for you it's to help you make the game okay it doesn't show up for the players okay so uh we can just say let's change its properties as well we can say uh coins dot uh name 
equals and then let's give it a name coins so whatever you name it right here is going to show up for the players it's like changing this right here and now you can see it shows coins um this is what's going to show up on your leader stats right here so name it name this whatever you want uh but i'm going to call it coins and we can say coins dot parent equals leader stats so you may be wondering why we don't just say player dot leader stats that's because we already know what leader stats is it's a new folder okay so we're putting it inside of the leader stats and we can just default its value by saying coins dot value equals zero so when they first uh join they're only going to have zero coins because uh, they just started so if you now look we can hit play, and now that we have created some coins in an int value, up in the top right corner, we have coins. As soon as my computer cooperates, it doesn't like, my computer doesn't like it when I'm recording. It does just fine otherwise, but when I record, it doesn't like it. Okay, so we have coins up in the top right corner, but it's not so exciting right now because we just have the coins. Nothing is changing, right? It's just coins. That's it. So let's give it, uh, let's do something exciting with it so i'm gonna open up my leader set script again and let's just go ahead and create a while loop remember while loops hopefully um we can just say while wait Oop. one do so every single second forever and ever we can just say coins dot value equals coins dot value plus uh plus one so every second we're taking we're making the amount of coins for this player the amount of coins for this player plus one. So we're just adding one to their coins every single second. Now if we play the game and look in the top right corner, we should see the value of coins going up uh, and up and up and up. So if we look here, it's going up by one every single second. So that's pretty cool. Um, and that's how you can change its value. But so far, we just have coins, right? Maybe, uh, and we can only change it from this one script. Maybe we want them to, um, if they click a certain part, they get um, coins, okay? So I'm gonna make that really quick just by adding a part right here. You can scale it, you can make it fancy if you want. Um, and you can hit anchored. You can actually go into images and click and hit, uh, spell out coin and take a and maybe a Mario coin. I don't know. Is this a Mario game? Uh, so if they click this, they get a coin. Uh, so now we can just insert a script inside of here. So yeah, sorry, I haven't explained that before. But if you do, if you go into images and search for something like a coin, you can take an image like this and you can drag it in and put it wherever you want like right now it's trying to go onto the base plate but we can have it on the side of this part but we already have our Mar mario coin okay um so this is our coin right maybe i mean it can just be our own coin it doesn't have to be a mario coin so yeah i just did that by clicking this button right here next to the search bar in the toolbox which you can do by opening in view and clicking toolbox or from home you can just click toolbox and then just click that and click images now I'm going to go back to models and looking great. Okay, so we have a script in here, but how do we know how to click it? And this is uh, kind of doing something else. We're going to have to insert something called a click detector. So let's insert a click detector into this part. And what this click detector does, it basically just makes this uh, part clickable for the player. Okay, let's go into our script and we can say um, script.parent dot click detector okay so we're saying the part right because script dot parent what what it's inside of dot click detector right so we're talking about the click detector and then we can say dot mouse click this is another um event this is just uh and then we can say colon connect function like that so this is going to happen whenever the uh the part is clicked by a player and because this this event does also have a um, a built-in parameter called player as well. We can call it whatever we want, but I'm just going to call it player. So what we're going to do now is we are going to um, give the player some coins every time they click the part. So this is going to be fairly simple. All we have to say is because the, because this is a uh, it has a built-in parameter called player, we can just say player dot leader stats so we're going to go into the player that clicked it and into their folder of leader stats and find by saying dot um dot coins so we're going into the folder called leader stats and finding their coins and we're going to change its value is equal to and then we can copy this right here and paste it 
and then we can say plus five. So we're just that's how you add five because we're saying we're gonna take the current the player's current amount of coins, and we're gonna make it their current amount of coins plus five. Or basically, we're just adding five coins to it. So now, if we go ahead and I'm just gonna drop this, uh, click this little drop down by clicking the arrow and click play here, um, and we're gonna go ahead and click this coin block. So so far, I have it so that. Um, when you click that coin block, it's going to give you five coins, okay? So let's come over. See, it's not like any other part that you just have a mouse, uh, but it gives you a click detector. That's what the click detector does. So we can click it, and as you can see up here, we're getting five coins every time we click it, and it's also still giving us a coin every second. So that's how you can change it. You have to go into the player's um, leader stats and we'll probably explore some more events when we make the real game but for now this was showing you how you can change it from different scripts you have to say player dot leader stats because we're going into the their folder called leader stats okay okay so that's pretty similar but uh s s oh, sorry that's pretty simple but maybe we want them to be able to purchase something maybe we want them to purchase a coil so i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this by hitting Control d and dragging it over Maybe this one gives them a speed coil for 20 coins, okay? Or maybe even 100 coins. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click this part and get rid of the decal. That's the picture. And we can go into the pictures and we can find a speed coil and drag that on instead, right? Like that. So people know, okay, this is what you click to get a speed coil. Okay, now in models, because this is a little advanced, we're just going to find a quick speed coil model by typing in speed coil and models. Let's grab this one right here by uh, this guy. I'm not going to try and pronounce it because I'm going to mess it up. Um, but by this guy, you can see it on the screen. Grab that and click it and then click no. Okay. Next, all you got to do is just drag it up really quick because we don't want it to get stuck inside anything. And then we can go ahead and drag the speed coil down into server storage and you probably guessed it we are going to clone the speed coil so let's go ahead and come into this part and we'll take the same script right here so let me just undo this so you can see we're just gonna grab this script from this guy here let's just call this coin block this is kinda like a simulator where you just click click and then buy something we can just take this script by copying it and then let's just call this coil block and we can paste into Okay, so that's how you paste, we just copied that script right here, and we pasted it in here, and we're just going to make some modifications. In here, we're going to say uh, player.leaderstats.coins.value equals player.leaderstats.coins.value minus... 100 because it's going to cost them 100 coins but we can't just do that because what if they have 90 coins and they click it then they're going to have negative 10 so we need to make sure that they have at least 100 coins how do we do that good old if statements so if you remember in our if statements we can drop a line here and say if uh player dot leader stats dot coins dot value so if the amount of coins that they have is greater than or equal to a hundred then we can give them the speed coil okay and let's just add an end there because we started an if statement so we're asking if they have enough coins by saying if they have greater than or equal to a hundred coins then they can purchase it and then we'll just uh, clone our speed coil in here so we can say game dot server storage right because we put it inside of server, server storage, and then we can say dot speed coil colon clone. And then we're also going to put this in a variable by saying local coil equals game dot server storage dot speed coil colon clone. You can call the variable what you want, but I'm going to call it coil. And we can say coil dot parent equals player dot backpack. So we haven't talked about backpack yet, yet, but that's just their backpack. That's when you uh, in Roblox games, you get to uh, have items like tools. If it has this symbol here, you can put it in their backpack, okay? Um, and if we go ahead and uh, hit play here, we can uh, try to get the speed coil before we have 100 coins, but it's not going to let us because we, um, because we don't have enough coins. Um, and if we wanted to, we could add an else statement, but we don't really need it because we're just... All we need to know is if, see, it's not going to let me have it, but if I click this for a while, get get to where I have 100 coins, I have over 100 now, I can grab it, 
Now I got subtracted coins, and I have my speed coil. So this speed coil doesn't exactly work. But uh, feel free to find a different speed coil and just put it inside of server storage and make sure to name it the same exact thing, which is um, which is speed coil like that. Okay, name it that, and you can find one that works. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you how that works um, and how uh, to change leader stats values and stuff like that. Because it'll come very, very, very useful later on. Um, and yeah, so this that's pretty much it for leader stats. There are tons of things that you can do. Um, and somebody mentioned in the comments also what printing does. And it's the same thing. It helps you. So we could right here say else print. They do not have enough coins. And this is inside of the um, script where we give them the speed coil. And it's just letting us know they do not have enough coins, okay? Um, if they have less than or uh, less than a hundred coins, then they don't have enough. Um, so yeah, so that is pretty much leader stats. There's so many things. There are numerous things you can do. Uh, let me just show you really quickly one more thing in our leader stats script. Let's go ahead and open that up. We can have more than one thing. Maybe you want um, wins also. Maybe your game has wins, or maybe they have it has um, dollars as well. We can just, sorry, I did that without you knowing. We can just copy these lines right here with the coins, and we can just change these names to something like cash, 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 <laughs> cash, all right? And then we let's just call this money. Okay, we can just call it money. You can call it whatever you want. If you call it cash, that's, uh, so we can call it cash if we want. And, uh, yeah, so that will then, if we play, uh, it will just show, it will show coins in cash, okay? And you can do the same thing by changing them with different scripts by saying player.leaderstats, uh, dot cash dot value instead of coins. And, um, not all, uh, events have the player parameter quite a few of them don't actually so don't just assume that everything is going to have a parameter called player and then you can change it that way uh you're gonna have to do some like find first child and wait for child thing um that we are gonna get into in a future episode so do not worry uh we will do that soon make sure to subscribe if you haven't already also if you like this shirt that i'm wearing right now this is a Co code bro 29 official shirt i'll have the link down in the description if you want to join our roblox group and support the channel in that way make sure to go join that uh like i I said like and subscribe and thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next part bye guys